Today I'm here to introduce another product and I, I feel that this product is something that's really needed. As with most of our products, um, I, I created them primarily because I was frustrated with what was available. So this one falls right in line with uh, that method of operation. Um, I had a friend bring a, a gust lock back for me from Oshkosh. This was last year. And uh, after looking at it and playing with it a little bit, I decided I didn't even want to put it in my airplane. Uh, it, it was too complicated, too many pieces, brackets and bungees and springs and you know, just a whole menagerie of stuff. And collectively it was all in my estimation, kind of bulky and uh, cumbersome to use and cumbersome to carry and heavy. and So that one kind of went by the wayside. And I put feelers out to other people and I got uh, one that was made out of sprinkler pipe that when you get where you're going you assemble it and it, it didn't work that well. It was uh, another thing that was complicated. I think sprinkler pipe belongs buried in your front yard. Um, so I didn't like that one. Uh, it was bulky to carry also, even if you took it apart. So then a friend of mine uh, picked up another one and brought it and said, I was really gonna like this one. And I, I think it was more, he did it more of a joke than, than he did uh, for its functionality. It was, uh, the best I could describe it, it was uh, leather straps with uh, a pair of uh, couplers that hooked onto the sticks. Basically, it, it was called a gust cuff. And uh, what it was was a pair of handcuffs with leather straps and uh, <laughs> a few other items that would probably be better placed in your bedroom than in your airplane. So. We decided to take on the, the challenge of a gust lock, and uh, I wanted to show you guys what we came up with. Now, it's, it's very difficult to video from inside the airplane with cameras looking down at the pedals and, and be able to really see anything. So what I've done is I, I created this little fixture, and this little fixture has a stick that moves all directions, and and this is the rudder pedals. And dimensionally, this and the stick and the dimensions here are the same as a, an RV. So we took this, used it somewhat for the development, um, and obviously for this video. Now, our product went through a series of evolution too, and we kept making it better. We started out with uh, trying to make something that was extremely light, because I know everybody likes that. So we started out with aluminum pieces. This is one of the prototypes. Uh, and we tried to make it as light as possible. Well, we found even out of T6 that the aluminum parts weren't as rigid as we'd like. And, and it has some twist in it. And, and I thought it was potentially vulnerable to getting destroyed. So we decided to go from that to chromoly parts. So all the parts that go in this gust locker are chromoly. They're all laser cut, formed, and then heat treated. And we went through a considerable amount of uh, development on this one also. And, you know, you can see it's, it's lightning holes and it looks airplane. And it's very, very strong. Never be able to... Uh, destroy this one in, in normal service. Now another important thing is the gust lock needs to be something that's easy to use. It's easy to put on, uh, easy to transport, uh, not heavy because obviously we want our airplanes as light as possible. So all that being said, uh, this is what we came up with. This is our finished product. It's very nice. It weighs about a pound, so light that it's almost not a consideration. 
it folds up small like this and it'll, it'll literally fit right in one of your little pouches, you know, in the back or on the sides. Um, we have one guy that suggested us making a little part that would go to the rear bulkhead that it would just set in. Uh, and we may do that if we get requests for it. So let me show you guys how this works. Uh, it's all constructed of 4130 chromoly. It's all heat treated. Very, very strong. A couple of the pieces we elected to make out of aluminum. The little latch here and this tube and they're anodized red. Uh, after heat treating, these other parts are blasted and then uh, gold cad or zinc plated. So you fold it, pull the pin, you fold it out like this. And then once you've established the length for, for your particular airplane, we made this pretty versatile. Uh, this one's a prototype, but the, the, the finished product will have roughly eight inches of adjustment. So we figured out what we needed for this, and I, I just went ahead and put a little black line here. So you take and you just slide the black line up, and you take this pin, and you put it in the hole that lines up for your airplane. In this case, it's this one right here. And then pull this pin out. And we put this on a little lanyard. It's a stainless lanyard and it has plastic coating over it so it won't scratch your airplane up or anything. Now, to install this, it's very simple. You just bend it like this. You stick this end against the stick. You take this pin and you slide it in like that. Then you raise this up to the grip and slide the stick forward until the two little forks pick up the rudder pedals like such. Then you reach over, you fold this little tab down, and you can take your foot when you're sitting in your airplane, and you just push on this tab with your foot and slide this little retainer ring down like that, and it's installed. Now, once it's in there, doesn't matter how strong you are, you're not going to move this much more than that. You're not going to move it forwards and backwards. I mean, the the stick is pretty much locked, so the elevator is locked. When you install this, you, you, you bring your elevator up to level. And then you adjust this for the length of your stick when the elevator is in the level position. Now, each airplane is a little different, so we made this pretty adjustable. And it locks the ailerons. They will move very, very slightly. Uh, if someone were to push on one real, really, really hard, it'll move slightly rather than damage it. Uh, the elevator is locked. The rudder pedals are locked. So all the controls are locked in one. It eliminates using that little piece of bent wire back there on the tail to lock the rudder. Uh, you don't need to tote that around. I had a bad experience with that. Mine, it, uh, the wind came up and the thing popped out. And I came back and thought I had a bunch of damage. Luckily, I didn't, but it very well could have. And you've probably seen uh, other guys on the forums that have had a problem with it. So, again, this is it. Weighs about a pound. Very simple to put in, very simple to take out. When you want to remove this, all you do is you. First thing, you put your foot on here and push down just a little bit and slide this back. Pull this pin out that goes around the stick and the unit folds up. Like this. This piece folds down. Pull this pin. Slide this one in. Put the pin back, put the pin back in the stick, 
and you're good to go. Now, <clears throat> inside the end that goes in the stick, we've got nylon pads here, 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 and one on either side. This is where it contacts the stick, so it shouldn't molest the paint off of your stick or, or anything like that. Nice part, all plated, anodized, won't rust, doesn't weigh much. And this should be the last gust lock you ever buy for your RV. Now, this particular model fits the six, seven, and eight, all of them with a tail dragger or nose wheel. And we also have a model, uh, excuse me, this one fits, I made a mistake. Hard to believe. This model fits the six, seven, and nine. And then we also make a model that has a little bit different fork that goes against the rudder pedals for the eights, because the eights have adjustable rudder pedals and they're configured quite a bit differently. So, let me know what you guys think. I uh, sure hope you like this, because my first run of these is about a thousand parts. So, like I say, hopefully you guys will like them. Now, I want to elaborate just a little more on uh, the installation on this. Uh, it, it may save a lot of questions when... Uh, the guy goes to install his the first time, and it'll definitely save me a lot of problem uh, manufacturing some instructions for this. Uh, hopefully with just a video, it should make the installation pretty simple. Now, again, to use this, you the very first thing you want to do is you want to go back to the tail of your airplane and set the elevator to where it's absolutely level. That establishes the position that the stick is in when you install this. Ideally, when this is installed, you want the control surfaces as neutral as possible everywhere on your airplane. So, first thing you do is you pull the, the small pin. Now, these pins are, are very, very hard. They're, they're heat-treated tool steel pins with a, a ball and spring detent. So, you should never lose them or have a problem with them. Now, you fold it out like this. On mine, I've already done this, and I, I put this black line on here so, so we know where it is. So we set the black line in place. Now, when you do your airplane your first time, you're not going to have a black line, obviously, because it's never been on there before. So the way you want to go about this is you pull the pin, put this over the stick. Now, the stick is protected by all the little nylon glides, so you're not gonna scratch it up or anything. So you stick this over the stick, and you put this pin in. In order to make this work, this thing has to have a spring action, otherwise it won't go in. So the thing that actually makes it function properly is by having it in a bind, so to speak. So you put this up to the stick, you put, push the stick forward, and put the little forks over the rudder pedal. Now, when you go to push this down, it should stop like with an arc in it like this. And the thing that makes it work is we're using this chromoly tube as a spring. So when you push down on this with your foot, you're putting this in a bind and you're actually bending this tube. So as it bends that tube and you slide this little collar down, if you look at this closely, you can see it's got an arc in it. Now, the pin at the top and the feet at the bottom are trying to push the stick this way. It's trying to push the bottom of the stick back, which obviously it can't. This is what makes it work. Now, as an example, if you take this out of here like this, and let's just change the length on it. 
and I can show or demonstrate this much easier. Let's just shorten it up. Here, I've only shortened it up about a half inch, maybe an inch. But as you can see, everything looks the same, but when I go to put this in, there's no tension on it. And when this, this locks, there's no tension. You can take the stick and just pull it back out of the way. It, it's, there's nothing holding it. Now, by the same token, if we go the other direction, and we'll go, we'll go a little too far. There's my black line. So let's go out here to the next hole. There, now you can see we're a half inch too long. So we'll put this back on. And when we go to push this down, you can see there's quite a bit of interference here. It'll still work there and it'll hold very well. But you it would take your foot and you push on this little foot pedal and you push it down and just slide the little collar forward. Now, you should be able to see there's a considerable amount of arc in this. That's what makes it work. Now, you don't want it too tight because uh, it makes it harder to put in and out. You really only need what it takes to, to hold the control. Now, I'm going to cut the video off here and we'll go back and we'll stick this in the airplane and then we'll walk around and test the theory. We'll grab a hold of the controls and demonstrate how much they move or, or don't move. So anyway, that's the principle that it works on. It uses this chromoly tube and this T6 tube as a spring. And that spring preloads everything, the rudder pedals, the ailerons, the elevator stick, it pretty much holds everything in place. So you only need this one part. You don't need a whole bunch of other junk to carry with you and two by fours with carpet on them and ready bolt and wing nuts. And I mean, you just can't imagine the stuff that, that I've seen over the years. And I really think the RV is a, such a clean little sanitary airplane that uh, this is warranted on your airplane. So let me know what you guys think. We got a lot of them. <laughs>Now, as you can see, I've got this unit on the airplane and, and it's set properly where the controls are neutral. So as you can see on the surface here, I can grab this and with considerable amount of force, uh, it'll move a little, a little tiny bit but it doesn't move very much. It, uh, it pretty much holds the control surfaces right where you lock them in with the, the gust lock. It, it's very, very rigid. I mean, it will move some, but it's not much. So there's the elevator. Now let's go take a look at the, at the run. Now we have the control lock on. So Let's grab the rudder and check it. That's both hands. I mean, it it will move if it suffered some kind of a impact, but it's it's really in there solid. Uh, it takes a considerable force to move it. All right, now the aileron. Now the ailerons will move some, and it's a good good to have the controls move slightly. Uh, but it takes a lot of force. Uh, it would take a huge wind to move them at all because they're pretty, pretty stout. But I can, I can move them. But uh, like I said, it would take a, a hundred mile an hour wind and gusts and odds are you'd rip the tie downs out of the ground before any of the control surfaces would move. When the gust